and you haven't supported HR 40. So if you wanna talk about the complexities of reparations, whether or not there should be a study in this country, you again have said that this country is not racist. And even though it's ha it has a dark past, it doesn't sound like you think it has a dark present. You have not sponsored uh, that bill. You haven't co-sponsored no. that bill. Why not? How many people in the United States today are actually descendants of slave owners? Forget descendants of slaves. Let's, let's hold that to the side. Descendants of slave owners. You've had massive immigration into the United States over the last 150 years. So now you're, you're going to say that people who immigrated to the United States who are not descendants of slave owners, were not descendants of that trade, now they're going to be responsible for paying that out going forward. Um, my mother's Jamaican. My father's Panamanian. You have a lot of black people in this country who are not descendants of the American slave trade. So I already know off top, there's a lot of black people in, the, in, in America who aren't going to be able to get that kind of benefit. Or, or get reparations. Well, most people who are for reparations, they feel like it should go to what they call foundational black Americans anyway. And, and I agree with that point, I agree <clears> with that point, <throat> but I'm just saying, I'm just laying out, these are the reasons for why, why I'm no. So while I'm saying so now- you do support reparations for what Lennar just deemed as quote, foundational black Americans? No, 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 I, I, I don't, no. I, but I wanna explain okay. that, I wanna explain that. And so that's okay. why you have a lot of people saying, okay, well then what are we going to do? And so my my view is is that what you do going forward is this is why you have to have wholesale changes in economic, uh, medical policy, et cetera, so that the the ability to access various parts of our economy and grow in our economy work for everybody, including including people in our country who are quote unquote found, foundationally black. There was a bill in California for reparations, the California Assembly, which is massively Democrat. They didn't move that bill. They could have moved that bill. When they were asked why they weren't moving that bill, they t they tucked tail and turned and turned and ran away. They didn't even have the, they didn't even have the guts to actually answer that question. So I'm here with y'all. I'll tell you why I'm a no. But you have Democrats who will say they're for something, but when it comes time to actually do it, they're not there for you. They say they run away. They don't answer the question. Or and to be blunt, like the current vice president, not answering a lot of questions. But she did say that she's for reparations. After she said she wasn't. So which one is it? No, she knows that she wasn't. That's never that, happened. That, that, okay. That's the false narrative. All right, that's fine. I'm going to let I mean, she was, here, she was here when she I'm said a, I'm gonna the question. I'm going to let you have it. I'm yeah. not going to challenge yeah. I'm not going to challenge Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Once again, we got to talk about black Democrat Party propagandists getting upset when Republicans school them with facts that don't align with the narrative, with the propaganda that Democrats want to push on black people, okay? And that is what this video is about featuring Byron Donalds, who is on The Breakfast Club, and he is facing Charlemagne the Devil and Angela Rhee and the other light-skinned guy, uh, DJ Envy, on this show, okay? And Angela Rhee uh, is one of these women that is ultra-woke, and I just want to remind you guys how woke this woman is. I mean, she went on CNN and was boohoo whining and crying about how people are calling her racist for <laughs> calling out racism. Take a look. I just want to say, Congressman, like, I wish that there, the new members, the folks who have followed in your footsteps could at least acknowledge that. Like, that's all so many of us are saying. And at this point, I'm emotional. And let's fix it. Because we can't, we cannot, like, we're, it's, it's like being constantly gaslit. We're constantly being told, I'm told every day I'm on air that I'm racist because I call out racism. <laughs> That is maddening to me, and I'm crying about it because it's crazy. And I wish and that somebody who's a colleague of mine, like it. Alice, could at least acknowledge that fact. Like, that is so frustrating. Yeah, so nobody should be surprised uh, that she's going to spend a significant portion of this conversation with a sitting congressman talking about a bunch of bullshit <laughs> that doesn't really matter, okay? I I'm so serious, okay? She's going to talk about is America a racist country? and qualified immunity and police brutality, all things that in 2024 don't matter, right? These are not pressing issues that we should be talking about, but this is what they want to spend time talking about because this is what they like to fear monger black people with, right? These false uh, perceptions that your life is in danger as a black person because of police. So this is what they're going to talk about. And Byron Donald is going to calmly school this panel on the reality of policing in America and racism and the fact that we really should be talking about the real issues, which is all the damage that has been caused to this country by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So without further ado, let's get into it. I asked him, I was like, well, why'd you make the move? He goes, because up there, there was no support for me as an officer for what I love to do, which is serve my community. So I said, enough is enough. I'm a move. He went to Florida. 
my my sheriff in Florida, he's like, I have more applications coming from officers who are in states or in localities where they're not getting the, the moral support or whatever they need to continue to do their job day in, day out. And so they're leaving. Well, who does that hurt? That hurts. That hurt. Who does that really hurt, though, Charlemagne? Yeah, because if you, trying, trying. In the, in the, if you don't have officers, if you don't have officers on the streets or officers, you know, in urban areas, who's really left in that lurch? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what what does qualified immunity have to do with having less police officers? Because so that- because the economic incentive of qualified immunity means that your personal assets aren't gone after if something goes wrong. So it, you know, you're in business. You're in business. Do you get involved in a project or a deal that leaves you massively exposed financially? You may, depending on your passion for that project, but then you also sit back and think, now, wait a minute, if something goes wrong, I'm going to be held massively liable. But you, but Maybe but I need to do something else. Something but goes wrong. We're talking about people getting violently yeah. hurt or killed. Yeah, clearly. Not, when it's people not, that you yeah. brushed over. But, but it's I'm, when, I'm when somebody clearly violates the constitutional right. And when, you're, when you violate a constitutional right, qualified immunity doesn't apply to you. And that's what I'm talking about. It does not. And Angela, don't do that. It does not. I thought that was the no, definition. I thought that was the do definition. No, it does not. If you, op- if you carry yourself outside of the confines of your training and the protocols of that department, qualified immunity doesn't apply to you. It that's does not. That's not true. It, that is very true. That is very that true. That is patently that false. Is, no, no, it's patently that is true. And we need to make sure we have that accurate. We cannot make that statement. Because you have a lot of officers out here who do their job with honor and dignity and respect for the people that they serve. Well, they says, okay, listen, qualified immunity is a legal doctrine that protects government, government officials from civil lawsuits when they perform their jobs unless they clearly violate a constitutional right. That's exactly what I'm saying. And what is a violation of that right is when they're outside the norms of their training and the protocols of that department or that, ag- or that agency. Boom. Boom. <laughs> right. In my opinion, I think it's a waste of time to be having this conversation about qualified immunity, right? I know there's a lot of woke revolutionaries out there and maybe people who are more libertarian in nature who uh, want to get rid of it, right? But the only thing you're going to do is that you're going to destroy policing in America, okay? You're going to create more pockets of chaos and destruction, particularly in these liberal cities, really, to be quite honest with you, because you're going to have police that don't want to do the job, right? You're opening up police to civil liabilities for doing their jobs, right? And people got to understand that we do not live in the ideal world, okay? We don't. There's a lot of gray in this world that we live in, okay? And when police are doing their jobs, they have to make a lot of split second decisions, right? So you have to allow some gray area for police to do their jobs without having to worry about potentially losing their financial livelihoods because they were doing their jobs, right? And that is the reality of policing in America, okay? There is no perfect solution. It's about trade-offs, okay? Do you want to live in a world where police are basically uh, allowed to be sued for basically anything, okay? Uh, Because if you want to live in that world, yeah, you're not going to have any police brutality because you're not going to have any police, right? But if you want to live in a world where, hey, we allow some protections, again, if, you know, police uh, aren't, you know, committing criminal activities, if they aren't uh, clearly violating people's constitutional rights. Hey, they got some protections to do their jobs because again, they're dealing with violent criminals. Then yeah, you're going to get some police brutality. Okay. Every now and then. But once again, if you're not a criminal, okay, if you're not living a life of crime, there's a 99.999% chance you will never have to deal with it. Even if you interact with a police officer, if you treat the police officer with respect, okay, if you don't try to talk back, if you comply, then you will walk out of that situation alive, right? There's a 99.99999% chance that will happen, okay? That is the reality, okay? And here's the thing. My biggest problem with policing is not even a police brutality issue, right? My biggest problem with policing is when you have police that don't actually do their jobs. When it comes time for them to serve and protect, like, for example, a mass shooter enters a school and the police officer runs away, yeah, that's my issue with policing, right? That's my biggest issue with policing, okay? But my issue with policing is not how they treat criminals, okay? (laughs) That is the last thing that I'm worried about, okay? Okay. So, you know, again, I find these conversations, again, to be a complete and total waste of time because for a vast majority of society, this is not a problem. 
at all. And I know somebody will pull up some example about some dude getting screwed over by cops that was innocent. It happens, right? That's the law of numbers, okay? I mean, that's just what it is, okay? I, I, but I'm willing to accept there will be situations like that, but let's hope those situations will be remedied, right? Uh, rather than to go with the alternative, which is lawlessness, okay? As a conservative, I value law and order, right? That is the essence of conservatism, which is establishing law and order so that we can have a moral and just society, right? You, you need to have law and order in order to have a functioning society. That That's just what it is. Here's here's the main thing, because like, we can actually go past qualified immunity because this is the place where you've refused to answer both on Donald Trump's accountability and on the law enforcement that you love so dearly. Right. What we know is that he's seeking full immunity, like the same immunity he, ha he now has because of the Supreme Court, because of the corruption of the Supreme Court, we have now gone beyond civil presidential immunity to criminal presidential immunity. He would like to give that same immunity to law enforcement. True or false? Well, let's let's expand that a couple true things. True or false? You can't ask true, a true or false, that, Angela, is, because you got to explain simple, the details. No, see, this is the problem. I don't want you to explain the details because when you explain the details, you don't want people to hear the details, the road, Angela. The, the details are what are things that matter. You got to explain like the details, or then you just talk. You're just talking, and then explain. If you, you don't, do that? if you don't explain the details, then you're just talking. Yeah, you don't want to say that because you know that it's not true. So that is not true. You want a true or false statement, Congressman? I want to know. I don't want to argue with you. I want to explain the facts. Country. Angela, I don't want to argue with you. I would I like to, to know if facts. you've ever experienced racism in this country, Congressman. Yeah, actually. Wow. Wow. I want you guys to understand. This woman just said that, well, the details don't matter. Right? You're supposed to say true or false to a question that she's clearly uh, framing in a way that is probably misleading. Okay? And Byron Donalds wants to go into details about the framing of the question before he answers the question. And she said, no, no, no. Details don't matter. Right? Details don't matter. This is... This is what liberals believe. Details don't matter. Yeah, I have. Okay. Do you believe America is a racist country? No, I don't. Okay. I believe that you, uh, that's true because you said that in an op-ed on Fox News as a black conservative, I, like Senator Scott, agree in our two lives and the lives of many black men and women like us are living proof that America is indeed no longer a racist nation and by far the best place to reach your fullest potential. And so here's my question. You did, however, vote to support the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act, along with every member of the House except for three Republicans. So I appreciate your bipartisan bipartisanship yeah. there. And I, what I do know as well, because America is in fact a racist country, was founded on such principles. Black men were lynched by the carceral state last week. I'm sure you've heard of Marcellus Williams by now in Missouri, who was convicted by a nearly all white jury and Freddie Owens in South Carolina, who was executed despite his friend recanting testimony that Owens was not in fact there. Um, this is the same state, by the way, that allowed for a firing squad as an execution option. Black people um, are about- Okay, so two criminals that were executed, rightfully executed. Again, this is what they're doing. They're trying to say this is an example of lynching, right? When criminals get executed for murder, okay? And, and I've looked into these cases. These guys are definitely guilty, okay? Both of them are guilty, right? I mean, the guy in South Carolina, uh, not only did he kill a woman, that's a single mother of three that was working like three jobs to feed her kids, uh, shot her in the head, point blank, because she couldn't open up the cash register or something as he was robbing her. The dude got in jail and then killed uh, somebody in jail, right? Killed a dude in jail that was there for a traffic violation. So this guy killed two people, but yeah, Angela Reed is sitting here talking about what well, they were lynched. They were lynched by the state. Again, this is what I'm talking about. This is the biggest problem with black folks. We worry about the wrong thing. We care more about the criminals and the lives of a, of a criminal than we care about the lives of the innocent black people that lose their lives on a daily basis to the criminals, right? We put more effort behind trying to defend criminals than we do trying to defend innocent lives. This is the problem. And this is why black people are so ass backwards, okay? This is why we're at the bottom. This is why people are laughing because we're worried about criminals being executed. That's what we're worried about. This is what we waste our time on. You're wasting your time talking to a sitting congressman crying about criminals being lynched. When, first of all, they were not lynched. 
lynching also is not a problem in the united states of america that's not really happening anymore okay so any conversations about the problem of lynching in america is just silly it's a waste of time but let's say that the criminals that were executed let's say that they did actually commit the murders which they did okay because they were found guilty in the court of law and judge after judge governors um federal courts all reviewed these cases and said, nah, like, you definitely are guilty, okay? But let's just say they weren't guilty, right? Let's just say they weren't. If they did not live a life of crime, if they were not criminals, career criminals, they would not have put themselves in situations where they could be accused of murder in the first place. Therefore, they would not have been executed had they not lived a life of crime. It's really that simple. Don't live a life of crime. Do not become a career criminal and your chances of being falsely accused of a crime, falsely being accused of murder, being wrongfully executed by the state is basically zero, okay? But again, that's not what these people want to focus on, right? They don't want to focus on actually holding criminals accountable. No, they want to try to make the criminals out to be the victims, right? And these are the conversations they want to sit down and have with sitting congressmen. This is why... Again, we're not making any progress because this is our so-called leadership right here, right here. Seven and a half times more likely to be wrongfully convicted of murder in the United States than our white folks and about 80% more likely to be innocent than others convicted of murder, according to a 2022 report by the National Registry of Exonerations. So please tell me how America is not a racist country. Uh, first thing I would say is that our past is a dark one. It really is. We can't we can't walk away from that. Uh, we had whole laws that were subjugating black people in the south of this of this nation for decades after the Civil War. We can't walk away from that one. Um, I believe that in America, we have great people in this country and we have some people, quite frankly, that even I can't stand. But they're the vast, vast, vast minority of people in our country. Most people just want to live in harmony and peace. That's what they that's what they really want. I think the important thing to acknowledge today is what's going to help black people going forward and what's going to help black people moving forward is economic policy. It's actually wide open energy policy so we can be energy dominant. It's yes, securing our southern border because we have a situation right now where, yeah, there are more than 15 million illegal aliens in the country. Where, where do they reside? Mostly in sanctuary cities like New York. Where are they at? Sanctuary states like Illinois, like California. What's happening in those cities? Hospital systems are overrun. Why are they overrun? Because you have people in the country illegally who don't have resources. So they're going into the emergency room where who? Well, what are they taking up? They're taking resources from poor people in our country, whether they're black, whether they're Hispanic, whether they're white. That's wrong. What about education? We have a situation where in too many inner cities, kids are not reading at grade level or they're not doing They don't have math skills at grade level. How does that help them excel and achieve? I don't want to discount what Angela is saying. I don't. I acknowledge the issue of our nation. But we always are trying to strive to be the more perfect union. So in 2024, what are the economic policies? What are the national security policies? What are the border security policies that are going to make our country thrive? So whether you black, Hispanic or white, you could thrive. Why? And so and so I think so it's then important. I don't you, wanna, would you have ahead. to say that if it wasn't a racist country, whether you're black, white or Hispanic, you could thrive? No, no. Are what? we thriving? Is your, are, are members in well, your I would state argue we're not. I would argue thriving? we're not really thriving right now. This inflation, which, by the way, was brought to us by Kamala Harris, is has really slowed down people from being able to excel. By Kamala? Yes. Yeah, vice president. <laughs> oh, oh, Charlemagne. It's but still the president. Charlemagne, listen, man. When Joe Biden wanted to do his American rescue plan, Kamala Harris was the tie-breaking vote in the United States Senate. She broke the tie that started this inflation that has hurt so many people in our country. Everybody listening to your show. Who's, it's not true. First sure? of all, it's the you wanna, it's you sure you go there? tie breaking vote. You, you sure you, you want to go there? Outside, what you pulling out? You, go outside you sure you want to go there? Okay, let's go there. <laughs> you had it you got notes. What I, what I you, you got notes, what Angela, actually, right? That's fine. I have notes. I'm going to give it to Charlotte. I'm going to give it to Charlotte. I'm going to give it to Charlotte. Is that on every question I've asked, because 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 Angela, Angela, hold on now. For every infrastructure project in your community, you should go out and thank Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the Congress that voted for the American Rescue Plan. And that's, look, what, that's what should be happening. Larry Summers wrote an op-ed back in 2021. Larry, Som Larry Summers was the Treasury Secretary for Bill Clinton. He was an economic advisor to Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. He said that the American Rescue Plan that Joe Biden wanted, that Kamala Harris was the tie-breaking vote in the United States Senate, would create a massive inflation that we have not seen in a generation. Well, guess what? Larry Summers was correct. 
You know who also was correct, Angela? I was, because I was in the budget committee when they brought the bill. And I said in that committee, it's gonna cause massive inflation. That's what happened. So the problem we have in our economy today is that prices have gone up massively. Wages adjusted for inflation is down. People's pocketbooks are hurting, but we have a presidential election of 40 days. So, and I'm gonna ask Envy this question. Envy, you do, you do how, you do, you, you're in the housing business as well, I know, because I watch, how I listen to the show. No, I'm just asking them a question, <laughs> chill, Angela. So, I, you know, I, and I listen to the show. I know you do a lot of business in housing. Mm -hmm. Would you hire somebody that broke up stuff in one of your houses to fix the other houses? No. Exactly. She broke the economy. I'm that's not, not going to do this me. this morning, Byron. Why, why so are you not going to do this, Angela? Chill. Because I'm, I'm bringing facts. And and I, hold on now. So now I'm bringing facts and, and you don't want to do it no more? Come on now, Angela. That's not right. I'm bringing so, facts. So and you, back, I thought so we were going to have a fact-based conversation. I want to have a fact-based conversation. You wanted to bring up votes. And so let's talk about votes. Go ahead. You have a 96% voting record with heritage action. Angela, I'm not running for president, but we can talk about votes. For those who are listening. Yeah. Um, Heritage Action is a part of the Heritage Foundation, which is the arc the architect of Project 2025. Which okay, so basically, again, you guys get the gist of this, right? You you guys get what's going on. This woman wants to talk about everything except what actually matters to the American people. What matters to the American people is immigration, crime, and the economy, right? She wants to spend time talking about things that don't matter, like qualified immunity not in the sense that she thinks it matter in the sense that oh well you know it's a big problem that it's in place no actually if you get rid of it you're going to make the problem of crime a whole lot worse right uh she wants to talk about systemic racism and criminals being executed by the state again not issues that affect anybody in this country that is a law-abiding citizen right that's what she wants to talk about right is, is the country racist but once we start to talk about what actually matters the economy uh the border the illegal immigrants in these sanctuary cities, what's actually happening in this country, the, the chaos and destruction that is a result of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's policies. Oh, now all of a sudden, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. I don't want to talk about it anymore, right? Let, let's move on and start talking about Project 2025, right? You see how this works? You see how this works? This is what I'm talking about. The, the so-called leadership, again, their priorities are in the wrong place. They don't care about real issues. All they care about is the emotional issues of racism and simping for criminals, right? That's all they care about. And then you wonder why we make no progress. It's because our priorities are not in the right place. You, you just saw it. Byron Donalds is talking about substantive issues, things that actually matter. She wants to deflect the conversation back to things that don't matter, right? And that's the most frustrating part about these types of conversations is when you have a politician in the room, and you have a chance to actually talk to the politician about things. Talking about reparations and criminals and racism, you are wasting your time and you're also wasting the time of the politician. You're wasting the time of the listeners, of voters, because those issues are not real issues in this country, right? They're just not, okay? But yet they want to make them out to be issues because they want you to vote based off these emotional issues that are not going to do anything to improve your life. If anything, if they got what they wanted, it would make your life worse. But they want you to vote based off these issues. But they want you to ignore the issues that are actually really hurting you. Okay? That actually really affect your life. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and perspective. Peace.